Hello, my dear friends, I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the O-1 visa for YouTube influencers, for bloggers and everybody who is here on YouTube with me. So you guys can get O-1 visa, but also you can look at the green card. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case. Let's go! Alright guys, it's time to talk about uh, O-1 visas for uh, YouTube uh, bloggers and influencers. I've been getting quite a few comments and uh, requests to make a separate video for YouTube, which I don't mind. And actually I kind of felt almost compelled to do this video because we also picking up more and more clients who are active or talented on the social media be it YouTube, be it TikTok, be it Twitter, could be Discord or pretty much anything else as long as we can show that there is recognition and there are achievements. Point number one that I want to make before we even start. It's crucial to understand that you guys are O1B visa. We are not O1A visa, however, there are situations when we filed for O1A, even with the YouTube influencers, TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers. Why? Well, because we qualify them not as influencers, but more as businessmen. And this crucial difference is important to understand because each case is individual, that's one. But depending on what are your achievements and what's your recognition, we can qualify your O-1 visa to the different categories. And I can see as O-1A for YouTube influencer could be in a category of education, right? You educate people. Maybe you have educational background. You get paid educating people. You played an important role for your channel, maybe for some other companies. That also could be O1A. However, most of those visas are O1B, more as content creators, right? And the content creator is much closer to movies and TV, which is O1B. And that's why we're going to talk about this in that respect. And smash the like button, guys, if you didn't know that there is such a crucial difference between O1A and O1B when we file the cases for YouTubers. So make sure you smash that like button so I know how many of you didn't know, so I can see that there is a value from my videos. So let's go further. One of the more, most important criterion in this video, that would be your employer. And of course, Many of us forget that, oh my God, I'm a YouTube influencer, I'm a blogger, I get a lot of subscribers and this and that. But we have to have an employer regardless of what you do, how you do, when you do it. If we are talking about O1 visa, O1A or O1B, we need an employer. Who could be an employer? That could be an American company. That could be an American agency, that could be an American agent. So there could be even one person who can sponsor your O-1 visa. This even could be unincorporated group of whatever those people do. So let's say there is a club of um, YouTube influencers or YouTube producers who find the talent on YouTube and promote them. So that group does not have to have an LLC or C Corp or S Corporation, whatever that is. They can position themselves as just a group, whatever the way they share the, uh, the income in that group. So those people can become your agents, right? So don't be limited to like, oh my God, this marketing agency in Miami has to be my employer. That would be great, but that's not the 100% way of doing this. Also, Keep in mind that you can always become your own employer. I've talked about this in O1 format uh, over and over and over and over again, but that doesn't stick. <laughs> For whatever reason, they throw it at you, throw it at you, throw it at you, bam, bam, falls back on the floor. So you can open up your own company and if you do it properly, you can file as that company to be your employer. It's not the theory, 
we have been doing it for years and we are doing it now and we will be doing in the future with no failures. We get that straight all the time. So make sure you understand that's an option. So now let's talk about the criteria. And of course, O1B gets uh, six criteria and uh, all of them are important, but we have to prove at least three of them. Usually we file about four to five. It's sometimes harder to show the, uh, the contribution to the field or the highest salaries in the field. Four to five criteria is pretty much the balanced approach to this uh, visa. So make sure you either have them or make sure that you understand that those need to be fulfilled within the six months that my team and I work on your case. So this is important to understand. Number one, you are playing an important critical or leadership role in a company or in a brand with a high reputation of that company or that brand. You can claim your YouTube channel being distinguished. That could be distinguished from who? from other people doing this. So maybe there is a press about your YouTube channel. Maybe you have a, a golden button in your, for your YouTube channel. Uh, maybe you have uh, a big contracts with brands who wanna advertise on your YouTube channel, right? So there are different ways to show how your YouTube channel has a higher reputation. Also, you can claim other YouTube channels where you play a critical role. For example, you make a collaboration with a big YouTuber and you do it on a constant basis or you did it a few times in the past, which made him or her grow. Admit and acknowledge that. Your YouTube channel could be a company or organization with a distinguished reputation, but also the company that wanna advertise with you. They could also be the companies for which you play the critical role. Or maybe your past experiences in other companies, uh, the real companies that created content on some, or, or some PR marketing strategies and things like that. So maybe you had something there in the past. And remember that this criterion has the component of the past and the future. We prove the past and we claim the future, that we're gonna be doing the same for this brand or for different brands in the future. That's important to understand. The second criterion, which also has a component of the past and the future, is your prizes, awards, and things like that. And of course, a golden button in uh, YouTube is probably one of those uh, rewards that I wanna see. 100K for silver button, mm, arguably it's good, but may not be good enough. I want to see either silver button and maybe some other awards. Maybe in your country there is a, um, a reward for bloggers, for influencers. And I know there are countries with the competitions like that, with the events like that. So bring me a silver button and maybe some recognition in the field in your country or in other countries. So it doesn't have to be your country where you live. Let's say you're from Germany, but you get this award in Switzerland. Totally fine, right? There is no problem. So that's the past component. The future component is that you are claiming that you are going to be continuing to participate in events like that. And you have to show those events. Number three, and that also has either a component of the past or the component of the future. So either or, not like the, the two before it, where we had past and the future. In the third one, and that's money, we are talking about either the past or the future. So either you made good money on your YouTube channel in the past. You have to show how you made it. Was it through just uh, views? Was it through the advertising? Was it through some uh, kind of collaborations with other YouTubers? Whatever that is, maybe you're an ambassador of some brand, which also could be a critical role. So that's in the past and make sure you pay taxes on that. <laughs> that's very important. I know you guys YouTubers don't like this thing. Maybe you're somewhere in Bali or Goa or Lord knows where in Thailand and you just make that money and you never pay taxes nowhere. That's not how it works. Again. 
if that's the way we just don't claim this uh, criterion but of course when you claim it and everything is good you just make your petition stronger and also you make your pathway to the green card because then you have an additional criterion to prove and that's all is good each criterion is very very important so we discussed three we have three left and the fourth one is the original and significant contribution to your field with youtube it's either very hard to prove or really easy why could it be very easy well because if you establish some type of trend in youtube and some other people start repeat after you and create similar trends if you have some unique content that stands out from other youtubers that's the way to go if you have some original way to depict things maybe thumbnails maybe your descriptions maybe you invent, invented something that's being used by other youtubers after you invented it maybe you wrote a book about youtube i don't know right there may be publications maybe you have some academic background and you like to write uh, articles maybe scientific academic articles about how to build up YouTube uh, audience or things like that and maybe people use that article and we can claim it's a contribution to the field maybe you have your own blog somewhere how to develop YouTube Lord knows right I just giving you examples that I had in the past but it could be anything that's original and significant original meaning it's new significant means it play a significant role in YouTube world, right? So that's the fourth one. It's either possible or impossible. So just apply to yourself and see what's what's going on. Number five, the press about you. This is one of the easiest, in my opinion, uh, criterion to prove, right? If there is press, it's great. If there is no press, it's not very hard for that to appear. What kind of press that should be? First of all, it gotta be in a big news outlets in your country or in other countries. Speaking about you an influencer, as a blogger, as a YouTuber, about your talents, about your blog, about your YouTube channel and things like that. Maybe your projects that you do on YouTube. Or it could be field or professional journals, magazines, newspapers, websites, specifically for uh, production for content for maybe marketing maybe for youtubers if there are such narrow things then that should be good right but make sure that I approve your press before you make a conclusion right because sometimes it takes uh, two lawyers to approve your press it's easy but don't make it complicated and number six I think that's one of the easiest one. We always fulfill this criterion. That's the recommendation letters about you and your talent. Bring me 10 from other YouTubers, from producers, from marketing agencies, people who want to advertise on your channel and make and pay you good money. We always claim the recommendation letters, the press, your awards and your critical role. So these four relatively easy to do of course there is nothing easy in immigration but when it gets down to uh, the certain criteria then i can say okay this is pretty easy it just takes time it takes effort but it's going to be done four criteria for youtube an easy shot right that's why we're getting approvals for these petitions right and left because we know what to do and make a note guys no one on YouTube, no immigration attorney, no paralegal who doesn't have a, a license to practice law, no one can explain it better than I do. Smash that like button if you agree with me. I give you the exact examples. What needs to be done? Which criteria we're going to close? Which are we not going to close? So make sure you guys give me some love, press that like button, share this video with your YouTube friends. Maybe they will be among you the first ones to hire my company so we could get the O1 visa. However, don't forget that O1 visa is here, but the EB1A is here, the green card. And we have experience of getting green cards for YouTube influencers in that category, but your achievements and your recognition has to be really, really big. And we need much more than I described. For O1, it's a very, very low standard. Maybe when I say you gotta get an award, you're like, oh, award, jeez, 
Well, for O1, it's nothing like this. You gotta have a national recognition or international if it's online. Golden button in YouTube for 1 million subscribers. Look, it's all in your hands, right? That's all. You can do this because, well, I've been able to get 10,000 on my Russian speaking YouTube channel for two years, but this is a very focused group who watches me, right? Because I don't talk about family law, uh, asylum, crossing the Mexican border. I don't cover those topics. I don't know what's going on there. I know business, talent, and uh, investment. So that's why I have a narrow uh, subscribers, but I love you guys all. And for me, it's important. I have 3000 people on my YouTube channel. And for me, it's not about how many subscribe to my channel. Although, of course, I watch that number, but it's more important the value that I bring to you. And why? Well, because I want to bring 10,000 people by 2030 to the States, and I hope you become one of them. If you guys want to check and see if you qualify for O1B or maybe O1A visa for as a YouTube influencer or for that matter, any other platform, TikTok, Telegram, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, it, you name it, right? Maybe even, uh, what's the name of Truth by uh, President Trump, right? He has his social media. So whatever, wherever you are, but this video was more for YouTubers, but whatever it is, go under this video in the description and find the link that says free evaluation and click on the link, fill out all the Fill out the questionnaire that I prepared for you. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.